Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. I waited a long time for this pen to arrive. This is my Lamy Dialogue CC in dark blue. I ordered it back in late January and it took weeks and weeks to arrive. Not because of the mail system, but apparently because of supply chain issues. I've been told by a couple of retailers that this little convex gold end finial was the holdup in getting this very popular new model of the Lamy Dialogue out of Heidelberg and into the stores. A couple of weeks ago I posted a video where I showed how to spot a fake Lamy Dialogue 3. Well now with the newly redesigned Lamy Dialogue CC in my hand I can really see the difference quality materials and engineering make. But this beautifully engineered retractable fountain pen still had a couple of surprises for me. Find out what those were right now. But no sooner had I posted that video than I get a notification from DHL that my Dialog CC is on the way. And it has come in this enormous box. It's enormous. It is big. Look how big it is. Can't get it all on camera, even with my wide angle lens. So what we're going to do is we're going to open it up. And here is the nicely wrapped box from Applebaum. And we have another big white Lamy box. This one says 081 blue MG and a lot of other code things I don't understand. And the white sleeve slides off and we have the Lamy box. And here we are. It comes with a little leather case which is very nice. And here's the pen. It's a nice anodized aluminum kind of finish with a roll stop gold. I think it's rose gold. And this little convex end finial, which I've been told is the reason for the delay on this model. And we give it a twist and there's the nib. So the first thing I can tell is that when I compare it to the fake Lamy, here's the fake sound, and here's the real sound. Just more silky smooth. And there's that beautiful nib. Look at what's inside the box. And we have some Lamy blue cartridges, five of them. And we have a tool for disassembling the cap, so we'll take a look at that. And we have a booklet. Let me dialogue. Very glossy. Disassembly and filling instructions, cleaning instructions, and the guarantee is two years from the date of purchase. He's not wanting to go in. Help me in with this. Help me in with this. Yes. All right, help me in with this. Help me in with this. Help me in yes. with this. Think of your secretary. Oh, that's a very good suggestion. Yes. Think of your secretary. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it's going to have to get used to that. But leather gives. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. I'm also going to post a video tomorrow where I'll show you how to fill the Lamy Dialog CC, use the included special tool to open the front end for cleaning and maintenance, and I'll show you how to do a Lamy nib swap as well. I was surprised actually when I held this new Lamy Dialog CC in my hand because it felt more balanced and it even felt thinner than the Dialog 3. And even though this is a fake Lamy, the size and shape are identical to the real one, 
but it does weigh less. But it must be an optical illusion that the Dialog CC is slimmer than the Dialog 3, because it's not. I got out my digital calipers to confirm that my eyes were in fact deceiving me. If you dare, look into the hypnotic eye. These are identical in diameter. The optical illusion must come from the fact that the Dialog CC is a full 15 millimeters shorter than the Dialog 3. The balance is certainly better with the Dialog CC, but this Dialog 3 is a fake and 7 grams lighter than the real one, so I can't be sure that the real one is well balanced at all. It probably is better balanced than this one. From the top we see the silicone rubber gasket that seals the gate opening of the retractable nib and it has Germany molded into it. That's another difference with the fake Lamy. The fake Lamy has no Germany on it and that's plastic, not silicone rubber. The front opening is chamfered at a slightly forward angle and we can see the rose gold plated curved garage door gate where the nib lives. The front curves up quickly to the full diameter which continues the entire length of the pen. There isn't a clip on the Dialog CC, eschewing the retractable clip on the Dialog 3 for a rose gold plated rounded metal roll stop with Lamy stamped into it. The front barrel is straight all the way to the end finial which is a lovely convex saddle shaped piece of rose gold plated metal. I thought that the body of this pen looked like anodized aluminum, but I believe it's lacquered brass with a very fine texture. I think the pen is brass as the lower section of the barrel has some bare metal parts on the inside of it where you can see the brass. The rear part of the barrel rotates clockwise to lower the domed gate and extend the nib. Let's look closer at this nib. At first glance, I thought this was a typical 14 karat gold two-toned Z50 nib that is interchangeable with numerous Lamy pens like the Accent, Ion, All-Star, CP1, Dialog 3, Emporium, Joy, Logo, LX, Next, Pure, Safari, Scala, Studio, and Vista. But on closer examination, it shows that this nib has no breather hole. So this is the Lamy Z56 14 karat gold nib and it's compatible with all Lamy pens that I just mentioned that take a Z50 nib or Z50 if you're in Canada. And there is the black plastic Lamy feed and the rectangular filler hole there at the base. If you retract the nib and keep on turning counterclockwise, that's anti-clockwise in Europe, and turn it the other way, Bruce, in Australia, You'll see the guts of the pen. And there's the inside of that lower part of the barrel that shows the, that it's brass on the inside. And the pen comes with this Lamy Z27 converter. This is one with the black knob on it without the little nubbins on the side here like you find in the Lamy and the All Star. That converter is the Z28 and it won't work with the Dialog pens. And the Z28 has a red knob on it, not a black one. Of course, the Dialog will work with the standard T10 cartridges, and Lamy is very generous by providing a box of five of the cartridges with the pen. To remove the nib unit to fill the pen, you unscrew the nib unit with the knurled part uh, of this assembly, not the converter itself, and it unscrews from the front part of the barrel. And there you have the entire nib unit. These nib units are identical between the Lamy Dialog 3 and the Dialog CC. And you can see on the bottom end of the barrel that these threads here are silicone rubber, which keep the pen from unscrewing while you're using it. And the nib unit has an M for medium, 14K, 585 for the gold content, and Lamy laser etched on it, and the lovely two-tone gold, and the outside being silver color. To put the pen back together again, you take the nib and slide it into the front part of the pen. And the nib unit has these slots on the sides so you can check your ink levels even when the nib is in the pen. And it has this knurled section here to allow you to grip the pen to unscrew it. So to fill the pen, you just dip this part of the pen into the ink up to that filler hole right there and twist the cartridge converter. 
to reassemble the pen, put the nib unit back into the front section and turn it until it's tight, like that. Take the lower part of the barrel, put it back together again, and then you extend the nib. At that point, I tend to give it a little bit more of a twist. Not so much that you damage the pen, but just a little bit more of a twist to allow that to retract the gate without unscrewing this part of the barrel. So now it works flawlessly. I bought this pen on Apple Bomb for $260.99 US, and that's after a 15% discount. Uh, for providing a review on a previous purchase of mine. You too can get that 15% discount. Just review some product that you've purchased from them on their website and they'll send you an email with your discount code. If you want to get 10% off your purchase, if you haven't purchased there before, just use the code word FRIEND, F-R-I-E-N-D, when you check out. The Dialog CC also comes in a glossy white as well as this matte dark blue. And it has a number of nib choices for you, uh, extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Lamy Dialog CC with a fake Lamy Dialog 3, a genuine Lamy Studio Palladium, a genuine Lamy Safari, and a genuine Moon Pilot A1 retractable. Now let's look at them extended and or unposted. And here they are either extended or unposted. And this is a genuine moon pilot because it has a moon man or Majon body for the A1. But the nib is a genuine pilot vanishing point. This one's a 1.0 stub in 18 karat gold. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Lamy Dialog CC, and it has a 14 karat gold medium nib. And the ink today is Pelican Edelstein Sapphire. Here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. Now, this nib is ultra, ultra smooth and bouncy. And extremely wet. Just look how wet that is. And look at this line variation. Now this is not a flex nib, but boy, there's a lot of a lot of bounce in that 14 karat gold nib. So I have to share with you the first writing I did as I did not select that ink to start. So the ink I started with was this Ferris Wheel Press Stroke of Midnight, which is a beautiful blue-black ink with a gold shimmer to it. And it's a fairly wet ink as well. And what I got was a very, very wet, very smooth, but the pen wrote like it was a fire hose. Look at that right there. Lots of bounce on this very juicy nib. And it was so much that I felt that I had to do something about it uh, because I couldn't control my writing. I ended up getting very blobby kind of writing with uh, my O's filled in, my E's filled in, all my loops were filled in. Uh, and so I was really concerned about continuing to write with this pen. So I uninked the pen, I cleaned it out, and then I did a little bit of an experiment on it. I'm going to show you what I did. I took the pen and I turned it upside down and laid it flat on my paper. And then I raised the back end of the pen until the nib touched the paper. 
and then I just raised a little bit more putting a little bit of pressure on that nib just to bend it down from the top towards the page so I had it upside down and I was lifting so I do it in side view I had the pen surface on the page and lifted the pen that way just to press that nib down just like this just a little bit and again very very careful this is a 14 karat gold nib and they cost about a hundred dollars uh, US to replace so I didn't want to screw that up I did that uninked so that I could look at my nib under the loop and be able to see it with a bright light in behind it to see that slit and I noticed that the the two tines of the nib let's say this is the ball of the nib right here like that and those two tines were together but as the nib slit continued I saw light in there okay so there was a gap right there now this is pretty normal these nibs are tuned to be like this I'm sure this wet but uh, I wanted to close that up a little bit so by pressing it down like this a few times and then checking it and then pressing it down again and then checking it I saw I was able to reduce that gap just slightly and I didn't want to go too far on it I did that and I re-inked the pen with an ink that I felt was a little bit drier than the Ferris wheel press and I know from experience that the Pelican Edelstein Sapphire ink is a fairly dry ink uh, so I was hoping the combination of closing up that little gap right there a little bit and a drier ink might make the pen a little bit more controllable and back to my writing sample you can see the difference not only was the nib more controllable um, but it reduced the size of the line as well the original size of the line was 0.6 millimeters and it reduced it to 0.5 millimeters this is before the nib adjustment and the change of ink and this is after with the pelican edelstein sapphire and i got a, a full 0.1 millimeter reduction in line thickness in addition to the fact that i now have some real control over this line and it's now writing very 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 nicely it's ultra smooth so now this line thickness here is 0 0.5 millimeters which is between a western fine and a western medium or a Japanese medium so I wasn't happy at all with how this nib felt or behaved I began to think that it was similar to my Lamy 2000 my Lamy 2000 was a fire hose and I really couldn't control the writing experience at all and now I can control the writing experience and I'm actually enjoying this nib on the page very much I still have some issues writing with this pen however and I'll discuss those in a moment but first let's do our quote And for some reverse writing it's very dry but surprisingly not scratchy at all but it's barely making a line and for some quick writing Yeah, no issues whatsoever very bouncy very wet nib so what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen in the introduction I mentioned this pen surprised me in a couple of ways well the first surprise was that it wasn't slimmer than the dialogue 3 in fact I think they used the same parts as the dialogue 3 but chopped the bottom half shorter and removed the clip that's the entire difference I was kind of hoping that the pen was a little slimmer than the Dialogue 3 as I find the grip very chunky indeed. I was actually kind of hoping that this pen would be a little bit slimmer than the Dialogue 3 uh, because this feels uh, just a little bit chunky in my hand. I'm going to kill the bitch. You want anything? You get me a chunky 
The second surprise was the bounce in this nib. This is the third gold Lamy nib that I've owned and the amount of flex on this one truly surprised me. My Lamy Studio Palladium has a 14 karat gold oblique medium nib with nowhere near the flex of this one. And my Lamy 2000 was an oblique medium nib that wrote like a double broad and flowed like it was Niagara Falls. Go ahead. Try and make me say Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls! So in my limited Lamy experience, I've had three Lamy Gold nib pens, all mediums, and all completely different. I bought the Dialog CC thinking it was a refinement of the rather clunky design of the Dialog 3. I was hoping for a better feel in the hand, a better grip for longer writing sessions, and a little bit better balance. Instead, I find it's just shorter without a clip, but essentially it's the same pen. The shorter length does keep it from feeling like a baseball bat in my hand, uh, but the pen still feels clumsy and my writing suffers for it. This Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Jonathan Brooks is the largest pen that feels comfortable in my grip. And look at the comparison with the CC. The Momento Zero Grande is a full 2.5 millimeters thinner where I grip the pen right here than the Lamy. There are many things to like about this pen, of course. The engineering is excellent and remarkable. The fit and finish of the pen and this super soft 14 karat gold nib is incredible. But my writing experience is not enhanced with this fountain pen. I have medium sized hands. So if you have hands like mine or smaller, you might not appreciate this fairly thick and relatively heavy pen in your hand. The Pilot Vanishing Point is much more comfortable in my hand and my preferred retractable pen so far and it can be used with one hand whereas the dialogue needs two hands to operate it and don't forget to tune in tomorrow as i'll be posting a short video on how to disassemble the lamy dialogue cc for cleaning and maintenance i'll also show how to swap nibs on the lamy with a z50 style nib as i'll be swapping this medium nib on my dialogue cc with this oblique nib on my Lamy Studio Palladium. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I am now an affiliate of the online store, and when you shop at Goldspot, you'll be supporting my channel as well. And you can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis and badges and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.